ain't getting out of bed today. I keep waking up from the previous night. So here we're looking at the Wacom Announcements promo art for the device. Uh, just to give you an idea, this thing has 17 customizable buttons. We'll go through the stats in a second. It's not worth an unboxing, but you know, in the box comes the actual device itself, a USB charging cable, and a dongle. So and a leaflet, you know, for instructions. So for a company right off the bat that prides itself on batteryless technology, this is rechargeable and has a battery. Also disappointing, it's it's not Bluetooth. It requires the dongle, and it also requires the Wacom drivers, which could present you know problems in other devices. Um, I've gotten around it in most cases, but it's just something to note. Uh, real quick on specs, um, you know they talk about comfort and this and that. I guess it's sort of the size of uh, about an iPhone C, you know, and about the same weight, maybe a little bit thinner and a little bit taller. Uh, we talked covered before 17 customizable buttons. Um, there's actually buttons across the top, the bottom, uh, the ring is a button uh, to switch between, you know, the actual settings that the ring performs. Uh, that's the touch ring. So we'll talk about configuration out of the box. You can just click this button here. That would be settings. So if we look at this kind of map, you can hover over all of these different things. And when you click on it, it'll bring you to the exact spot within uh, the old Wacom tablet properties which is probably the easiest way to get there. I'm not going to waste the key on settings. I'm just trying to show you for demonstration purposes. Uh, each one of these items basically customizes each part of the actual Express Key remote. One of the things I like is if you have one of the keys set to the, uh, the radio menu, I mean, this gives you another whole bunch of options, which I'll use this like I showed in some of my other videos to bring up panels and, and different things of that nature. But it, it basically is adding, you know, another eight buttons to your, you know, Express Key remote. Another way you can customize this is right through the Wacom Desktop Center. So you see if I click on the remote, it's going to have right here in settings all of the different options that we just covered. So there's 15 different ways to get there. The easiest for me is old school and to just go into the, you know, the, the tablet settings and configure it once. Generally, I'm not going in and out, especially as I'll show in a minute. Um, you know, you can configure different settings by program. So right here in the tablet properties, just the same place we've been talking about, we can add individual programs. So for the purpose of this video, uh, it should pick up any applications you actually have open, but if not, you could always browse to the EXE. We're going to pick uh, Photoshop. I'm going to add that. So you can see right off the bat, this guy is pre-configured. It's carrying over the global settings into Photoshop, which is nice because if I don't want to change the settings for this remote globally, I can change it individually um, for Photoshop. So when that executable is open, uh, the Wacom software automatically detects that and then switches over your settings to whatever you're using. So I am not going to sit here and drag you guys through configuring this remote. What I'm going to do is I'm going to configure it. Okay, I'm going to cover the default settings real, real fast and then show you more of a how-to on, um, you know, workflow for Photoshop, which is the main purpose of the video. So the outer keys already are set for things I'll, I won't use. Settings, precision mode, uh, display toggle is actually nice, especially on my Cintiq Pro 16. It doesn't have that as a, um, as a button. Um, I still won't use it. Uh, the Wacom screen keys, probably won't use that. Page up, page down, nope. Radio menu, I'll keep that. App shortcuts, let's see. The inner keys, uh, these are important, these modifiers. I find you, you always seem to need them. Um, Spacebar, especially. Holding down control, I don't know if you need that. Alt, you need that for color picker, things like that. Uh, shift. And then finally, the ring keys. We're going to change this up a little bit, the undo and redo. They're nice on the ring, I just don't like where they are. Uh, the new layer, we're going to drop that and we're going to drop the save button. So I'm going to go configure this thing up and then we'll walk you through exactly how that works. T is lovely. Anyway, I just want to show you something real quick. Um, looking at my screen, first thing we're going to change is the actual uh, button on the ring key. That's a little tricky if you don't, if you haven't done it before. So there are a number of different options you can see on my screen. There are predefined things, application, on-screen controls, which are the panels, 
uh, just a number of different things. I just go right for what I want. So I need a keyboard uh, combination because I'm going to do um, step back. I'm going to get rid of what's here. Now the funny thing is the command for step back is uh, alt Control z But if I hit Alt on my keyboard, it's not going to do anything. If I hit Control on my keyboard, it's not going to do anything. The reason it's not doing anything is because within the software, those are known as modifiers. So what you have to do for the Wacom prop, uh, tablet properties to recognize the command is that you actually have to hit all three buttons. So if, if I could hold down uh, Alt, Control, and then Z, you can see the command goes in there. And then we'll rename this Step Back. And there we go. We'll open up Photoshop and we'll uh, make a mess of things. And then we'll, and you can see it's working. So I'm going to go through the rest of them. Um, I don't think there's anything more complicated than that, other than if I wanted this to be, let's see, here we go. You see here, like the middle row is set for these modifiers. So they have these, you know, sort of segregated shift, alt, you know, control, space, you know, the main ones. So if you're looking for just that one, I don't know that you can't just do it in a keystroke. For some reason, they had it separated and while I was doing this. I thought it was probably a, a good point to bring up. Okay, we're going to walk through this. My workflow, how I've configured the uh, Express Key Remote. Just some Photoshop tips for you uh, painters and maybe illustrators. Uh, hopefully this works for you. But if not, it just gives you a general idea um, how to best use the device. So I'm capturing the screen uh, so you don't have to listen to me ramble on. And just take screen captures if you want. But basically, the um, left side of the tool I've used for most of my um, like tool shortcuts. So one thing to note, when I have the tablet properties up, I'm actually using Windows. So some of the decisions I made are based on the fact that I might keep this open, or if I minimize Photoshop in any kind of way, I can get to the default settings which are like you know Wacom screen key so for example if I need to get to display settings or any of these other things I can still do that application level though I'm just using what I want in the specific application so if I minimize this the first tool is brush tool okay so we'll draw there my next tool I use, uh, particularly if I'm inking, and I'm swapping the foreground and background colors. So if I want white in here, say if I'm inking something, uh, then I can do that very quickly. Next button down is going to be the paint bucket tool. Okay, so what's neat about this is if I'm doing black and white, you know, especially like inking, you know, if you look at my screen, the button right above it is moving between black and white. So we'll just fill this black. And then I can switch back to the brush tool, switch the colors to white. And you can see kind of how that fits together. The last button here I use for the lasso tool and uh, we'll get to the middle buttons in a second, but I haven't changed them. The alt button is right here. So if I click on the lasso tool and I'm kind of moving around, I could then hold that um, alt button to go make it the kind of polygonal lasso tool. And then again, switch to my bucket, switch colors. I mean, you could see how, you know, the line of thought was in, in making these, those tools. The other side is real easy. Uh, the first button flips my canvas, okay, horizontally. Next one is my radio dial. Now on my radio dial, I think I'll cover that last. Next one, fill screen. Finally, the last one brings me to 100%. So that's basically how I have that set up. The inner keys I didn't touch. Uh, we'll just go through it because they're modifiers. And that shift control, alt, and space. So I have to minimize this or it get crazy. So if I hit this, I can move it around. But I think we all kind of know how that works. So the ring keys are a little bit more complicated because if you your, your thumb naturally moves up 
to go select the keys and that's going to brush up against the zoom and, and the screen's going to go all crazy. So what I usually do is if I'm holding this, I come from the top to the bottom. So I'll go clockwise to the first button here. And if I select this, it's quick transform. Okay. And that comes in later when I want to work with smart objects and things of that nature. But six o'clock is deselect, which is nice because I don't have to move my thumb up. Okay, this next button over here is clear. And now what I have on the left and right, instead of undo, um, what I have is step forward and step back. So if I want to step back, I just click once here. If I want to step forward, I click once there. And I think that's about it. Now you can see how just for a second, now granted, I'm trying to show you guys the remote as I'm doing it, so that's why I hit it, but it takes just a little bit of practice not to hit that zoom. Um, but once you get used to it, it's like second nature. So overall, uh, this definitely increases my workflow by a lot. And if you click this middle button here, that's going to show you what the actual ring itself does. It doesn't do anything else but bring up the setting. But, you know, as you're flipping it, you can see the light moving. And that's pretty neat. So it always kind of gives you an on-screen confirmation of what it is you're trying to do and where you're trying to go. The last thing I said I'd cover is the radio menu. Most of these are self-explanatory. Brush panel, uh, save, tab is going to get rid of your uh, toolbars. Uh, full screen is self-explanatory. It's going to, and obviously these could be mixed together. Um, I'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, display toggle, I don't have two displays attached right now, but that's that feature where if you had a main display, you could use your Wacom pen to actually control the objects on that other display, which is really nice. Avoid you having to use a mouse. Uh, precision mode, that's an old Wacom little deal. Don't use that much, but I wanted it there anyway. So convert to smart object. I'll just show you that real quick, uh, what I do with that. I just grab my brush. Okay, and we do something like this. You hit this button and you'll see now it converts it to a smart object. And then I have my quick transform button it basically allows me to keep all the all the detail I mean I'm not going to go too into smart objects but when when using multiple images on the same um, you know piece of paper if I want to maintain like gestures or you know thumbnails or something like that that's a good way to kind of keep um, you know the, the detail of it so if you want to blow it up and then do your your roughs on top of it you can do that and then finally delete layer that's pretty self-explanatory any of these Wacom submenus can be pinned, meaning if I want full screen mode or, you know, if I want my toolbar gone or what have you, um, I can pin the radio menu to make sure that I can still have access to these things. But I covered it in my Satik Pro 16 video. I just want to touch on it uh, one more time. In the uh, uh, on-screen controls, you can configure any one of these in the radio menu or any other menu to be whatever option you like. So just really quick, we're going to take display toggle and go to on-screen controls and keypad. And this is almost exactly what I did in, in, in the other video. But basically now we're going to get rid of this. And when I hit my keypad, you see here I, I was originally setting this up to do different things like I'm probably going to set up all my actions here. And like if I hit this button, this was one of the screen sub panels that I actually removed from the last button over here. This is so customizable. You have an almost unlimited amount of different options uh, just by having this little remote. So by putting that one little keypad there, I'm able to link to all these other things and they can also be pinned. The only complaints I have, which I brought up already, is that um, it's not Bluetooth, but honestly, the battery is fantastic on this thing. It seems to last for you know days and stuff especially if you turn it on and off here the inner ring itself is a little bit sensitive you know for zooming in and zooming out and you know the brush settings and such there is a place where you could set that i have mine all the way down um, to the slowest possible settings and i'll just give you a glimpse in photoshop if i start to zoom this thing you could see how this could go crazy really quick which is why i had these settings to you know, 100% and fill to kind of bring the screen back to normal if I screwed up. I still find it useful, if you, especially if you don't have a touch device. Um, 
the, the brush settings itself, I don't use that much. Again, I, I mainly draw right now. I'm not doing a lot of painting, but you could definitely see how, um, you know, it's, it's not as tight as you might want it to be, but uh, it's not bad. You get used to it. So if you're into concept art and things of that nature, um, I think it, it works out great. And the screen rotation, this is the newest version of uh, Photoshop. It's a little janky, but not really. I think it... I actually prefer the hesitation to make sure I don't whip the screen around like a, you know, a tornado or something like that. And again, if I'm trying to get back to where I'm supposed to be, it's a little easier that it's kind of janky like that because it lets me get back to uh, square one. So um, anyway, um, the thing about this device is, is that it's really the, the perfect handheld device for, you know, art enthusiasts, professionals, etc. The price is a little high, comes in somewhere, you know, you can get about $89 now, $99, you know, depending on where um, where you're shopping. It's been out a while, but um, they don't make another device like this. So there are other things, I have other videos on my channel even, that you can use other impromptu solutions, but they're not really as good as this one. This is made for Wacom devices. It's a better solution than the actual hard-coded keys. Um, if you have the 27 QHD and the newer Cintiqs coming out, it's actually magnetized to the actual device itself. So in fact, almost works just as well as the built-in Express keys uh, anyway. So I give the device, uh, you know, probably a 8 out of 10. You know, again, would like to be Bluetooth. Uh, don't like the battery, but I mean, what are you going to do? The thing's wireless, so uh, either way, it's going to need a charge. Those are major knocks for me. I really like it. I use it a lot, uh, and I'll be posting alternatives if you're just not into this kind of thing. So once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, ask me any questions you want. I have gotten this to work on other devices. Um, I've gotten it to work with a Surface. I've gotten it to work with a Lenovo Yoga. 14, which has a Wacom AES digitizer built in. I'm currently doing this on my uh, Bosto, which has a different firmware on it, and I'm using it with that. So Surface Pro, I think I mentioned already. So you can use this with other devices as long as the Wacom drivers don't completely smash whatever's on there already, like potentially another drawing device, you know, of a you know alt maker or something like that. Anyway, another win for me. Love the device, and I'll exit with screenshots of my exact settings. Catch you in the next one.